What's up, peeps? We're back. As always, I'm your host, Lee Benson. Thank you so much for joining us for our YouTube edition of the AEW Insider. Remember to stick around to the end of the show. You can find out how you can win a Series 1 AEW action figure. I actually picked which one it is, and I did order it. So if you want to know who it is and how you can win one, make sure you stick around to the end of the show. AEW. Well, Le Champion, Chris Jericho, did an interview with Sports Kita. They asked him about future members joining the Inner Circle and more. He said, on if we'll see a new member of the Inner Circle. I don't know. It depends on what happens in the storylines. To me, everything is based on the story. The story that we're telling. What fits, what doesn't fit. I think it's one of the downfalls of the original NWO. When they started having Virgil and guys like that in there, it kind of takes some of the exclusiveness and cool factor away. If somebody's going to be in the inner circle and get asked into the inner circle for real, it's going to have to be for a very good reason and something I'm going to have to be convinced of. I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not actively searching for new members. And on if MJF is an underrated wrestler in AEW, Jericho said, no, I don't think so at all. I think MJF is a lot like Sammy Guevara. He's moving up the ladder and he's doing a great job at 23 or 24 years old. I think Darby Allen's the same. I think Jungle Boy has a huge upside. I think Scorpio Sky has a huge upside. You haven't seen hardly anything of Dr. Luther yet and all the stuff that he can do. I think Trent is someone that's going to be very big for us at a certain point. Orange Cassidy is much of a cult figure, but when people start filling up the arenas again, you're going to see him being a lot more popular than he's ever been. There's quite a few. I think even with the inner circles, Santana, Ortiz, Jack Hager, all these guys have grown a lot since we joined forces. The sky is the limit for them. And he also asked him about co-hosting the last drive-in. He said, I'm a big horror movie fan. Joe Bob and I connected when he did talk as Jericho about a year ago, and then he called me to kind of return a favor to do his show. We came to an agreement of what we like to do. Both of us were big fans of it, and we made it happen. We're both very excited. Lance Archer was on Busted Open Radio this morning. Bubba Ray Dudley feels very strongly that Archer does not need Jake the Snake speaking for him. Archer replied to that and other things. Absolutely not, because once I step in the ring, going back to my debut against Marco Stunt, and the second week with the poor stole that stepped into the ring with me, and even a match last week with Colt Cabana. As good as Colt Cabana is, I command the spotlight when I step into the ring. Jake commands a spotlight because he is Jake the Snake Roberts, and when he speaks, people are listening. But when I step in that ring, people are watching and they're listening to what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So no. I have no worries about a loss of spotlight. And finally, which name in AEW would Lance Archer like to work with? Pac. Pac is one of those guys. I think he brings that strong style that I bring myself. You have that dual dynamic of the monster and the high flyer. The guy can do all these amazing, cool, crazy things. But when he brings the fight, he brings that fight. And I love that aspect. WWE. Vince McMahon has been slapped with a lawsuit following XFL firings. The Atlantic reports that former XFL commissioner Oliver Luck is suing for wrongful termination. The specifics on how much Oliver Luck is suing for was not disclosed. Vince McMahon hired Luck in 2018 and promised him 20 to 25 million over the course of a number of years. Those years didn't last long as expected, and the XFL met an early demise in early 2020 due to the COVID-19. Luck's contract said he would be paid in full if he was terminated without cause. A WWE employee wrote an anonymous letter claiming WWE is making a work through the COVID-19 crisis. John Alba reported that a public statement was read on April 21st during the Orange County Board of County Commissioners meetings. This statement was from an anonymous WWE employee named John. The statement said, my employer, World Wrestling Entertainment, a.k.a. WWE, is forcing me to work at TV tapings for his weekly shows, 
despite stay-at-home orders for coronavirus. I am unable to speak out because I need my job, and I know I will be fired if I approach the higher-ups. Despite sanitary precautions, we cannot maintain social distancing, and we have to touch other people. I request the government to shut down these tapings and enforce, so my colleagues and I may follow social distancing rules without fear of repercussion of losing our jobs. That is insane, somebody's in a company singing like a bird. In response to that statement, WWE released this statement. It reads, The accusations aren't true. Employees know they have confidentiality to go to human resources, not the public, notwithstanding the appropriate protocol. No one would be fired if they were uncomfortable with their surroundings. We've made accommodations for individuals upon request. Well, I reported on my last show that fans descrambled the hacker's voice who's been hacking WWE. The two voices they got were Ali and Chad Gable. Now they discovered a third voice, and the third person is the New Day's Xavier Woods. So I doubt WWE foreseen us descrambling the voices and just had whoever was around record it. It will be like Vince McMahon's as kid being Horsewoggle or the raw laptop general manager. They'll just pull one of those wrestlers out at the last minute and throw him into a storyline. I would like it to be Gable, but who knows. Now, Rob Gronkowski recently signed with WWE. He was just brought out of retirement yesterday and will be reunited with Tom Brady again with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this season. WWE told him he still has to defend his 24-7 title. Their official statement reads, Congratulations to Rob Gronkowski, the current WWE 24-7 champion, on his return to football. Per the rules of the 24-7 title, Gronk must defend his championship at all times in any location. That includes celebrating a touchdown pass from Tom Brady. Remember, anytime, anywhere. And it definitely looks like all WWE releases are not permanent just for a select few. I told you already that Sarah Logan will be back sooner or later because people backstage were very vocal about it. And today on the show called The Bump, Drake Maverick appeared. He is still in the Cruiserweight tournament and he said a him winning that title decides if he stays or goes in the WWE. So we will see how that goes and who else they're going to hire back. Impact Wrestling. At their Rebellion Night One pay-per-view, Crazy Steve from the older faction called Decay returned, and Willie Mack actually beat Ace Austin for his X Division title. Also, Tessa Blanchard and Eddie Edwards were supposed to face Michael Elgin for the Impact title, but the two did not make it to the pay-per-view. They both issued separate statements. Tessa's read, I've been in a ring with guys bigger than you, and I've beaten guys bigger than you. Scared? No. Staying safe? Yes. To be the best, you've got to beat the best. And whether you or anyone else likes it, I am the best at Impact Wrestling. I'm sorry to all the fans of Impact Wrestling that I wasn't there tonight. These times affect each one of us in a very different, yet very significant way. I encourage everyone to stay home, and that includes myself. Great job to everyone who competed tonight. And Eddie Edwards said, I'm truly sorry I'm not there. I apologize to the fans who are looking forward to our match. I apologize to the locker room. This is just a hiccup. I will be back, and I also want to say thank you to Impact Wrestling's back office for being so supportive. Hashtag thank you. So I didn't watch the pay-per-view. I did watch highlights of it, I'll be honest. But it seems just like WWE that Impact knew they weren't showing up and didn't even tell anybody until it was too late, a.k.a. Showtime. Random Wrestling News. On WWE Backstage, Maria Menounos revealed that WWE actually approached her to be on a season of Tough Enough. She didn't think that she could cut it and referred them to Sonya Deville instead. We see how Sonya has done, and she probably has great admiration for her friend Maria. Independent wrestler Hannibal had some very harsh things to say about Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Luke Gallows, what have you. He is definitely one person who was not sad to hear about the firings. He said there were some people in Deep South Wrestling in 2006 who treated him with respect as a non-contracted trainee. Hannibal was paying to be there and train with future WWE superstars. But due to what happened when he was there, 
that didn't last long. He said, there were some nice wrestlers there, but there were also some who treated the non-contracted wrestlers like shit. Hawkins or Ryder were two of those who definitely thought they were better than the non-contract wrestlers. But there is one incident which is the reason why I don't like them. I definitely would have gotten into a fight if I stayed there longer because some of these dickheads were literally pushing me to my limit. I'm not saying they all were. Brodus, MVP, Kofi Kingston, Jake Hager. There are guys who come to mind and they were really nice to me and treated me equally. The thing that really pissed me off and got me heat were Ryder and Hawkins. There was this day I needed a ride to practice. I had asked them the day before. We actually all lived in the same housing complex in Atlanta. I lived with Brodus Clay at the time and he was nice enough to let me stay with him. Brodus was in the morning class and I was in the afternoon class that Ryder and Hawkins were in. I needed a ride to practice one morning. They told me a time to wait and gave me a specific location to take me to practice. They confirmed it. They seemed like they were going to take me, and they never picked me up. Another incident that made me lose respect for Zack Ryder is when Bill DeMott held multiple jelly donuts in his face while Luke Gallows got naked in the ring and wore absolutely nothing and just had his hands over his dick and proceeded to give Zack Ryder about 10 or 15 naked stink faces until Bill DeMott had held all the jelly donuts in Zack Ryder's face. He took the stink faces so no one had to practice that day. In our last podcast, I told you the story of how actor Freddie Prinze Jr. was actually a writer for WWE. He got caught playing World of Warcraft while in a writer's meeting. He also revealed how he got his job there and how he got his trouble on his first day. He said, and then when I kind of made it, they would just put you right up front at WrestleMania. I'm like, yeah. This is better than getting the best seat at a restaurant in L.A. You know what I mean? Because I love wrestling. And then I was there. I met some random people and they were like, you should talk to Vince. You'll say no one just crap on it, but you'll have ideas too. And I was like, yeah, I should talk to Vince. I wasn't acting anymore. I was like, what's going to happen really? So they told me first I had to sit down with Stephanie McMahon. So I was like, all right, excellent. I'll sit down with Stephanie. But when I did, it was a legit job interview. And she was asking me these questions. I was like, we're just going like this, huh? So I started throwing some stuff out there. And she was like, you have to talk to my dad. About his first day on the job and making Brian Gerwitz angry. So I talked to Vince. I can tell you this because Brian Gerwitz and I are cool. But my first day, he brings me in Vince's office. And it's just Brian Gerwitz and me. And Vince goes, Brian, this is Freddie. He's going to be working with us on the writing team. Brian's very polite. So he goes, oh, hey, man, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We, we both sit down and Vince grabs Brian's script and goes, well, Brian's going to be rewriting this. And he just throws it to me. And I look at Brian and he's just looking at me. He's not so nice anymore. We walk out of the room and I'm like, dude, I don't know. And he goes, this is because you're here, man. And I was like, bro, it's not. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was going to go down like that. So I was like, okay, all right. I'm a quick learner. So it took me about two or three weeks and I kind of figured out how the river flowed. And then I just had fun from that moment on. It was just the travel that kicked my butt in the end. All right, peeps. Well, that's it for this show. Remember, if you want to win a Series 1 AEW action figure, you just have to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Those four things, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and boom, you're in the running. If you're nice, definitely hit that notification bell too so you know when our new videos are coming up. But I did order AEW Series 1 action figure of La Champion, Chris Jericho. So that's right, he'll have his fedora hat on, he'll have his leather jacket, and he'll have his AEW title. If you're a figure collector or you like to display them, you know you want that AEW belt. So Ringside Collectible says mid-August. Let's hope they get here sooner, but it's paid for, it's bought, it's Chris Jericho. So, so if you want to win La Champions AEW Series 1 action figure, make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Remember to show us some love on all major podcasting platforms also on facebook and youtube under the aew insider and on twitter under the aew insider one as in the number one we'll see you soon peeps ciao